ja, fantastisch om wederom een volle zaal uh, te zien hier. Uh, we zijn aan het einde gekomen bijna van uh, ons Marxisme Festival 2022. Nou ja, de afgelopen twee jaar hebben we natuurlijk in verband met corona dit niet kunnen doen. Um, maar de opkomst deze keer was groter dan voor corona. Dus dat is heel erg mooi. En laat ook echt wel zien dat er ja, echt behoefte is aan een ander geluid dan... Uh, uh, De bedoeling van deze slotrally is eigenlijk dat we hebben hier vier activisten uit vier verschillende uh, ja, stromingen, bewegingen eigenlijk. En uh, ze gaan jullie vertellen waarom het belangrijk is dat je hè, je inzet voor hun uh, cause. Um, ja, ik heb er wel zin in. <laughs> en dan wil ik als eerste eigenlijk Maarten aankondigen. Maarten is mijn uh, klimatti. Van, ik ken hem van uh, Shelmus Vol campagne. Maar ja, misschien dat jullie hem ook wel kennen. Hij heeft uh, in januari dit jaar uh, meer dan een week in een boom geleefd. Omdat hij het sterrenbos uh, probeerde te behoeden voor kap. Ja. En, uh, ja, is gewoon een topactivist. Ik vind het fijn om met hem te organiseren. En... Aan jou het woord. <laughs> Oké. Okay. Um, spannend dit. Kan dit iets hoger? Oh jee, je moet gewoon je moet mega sterk zijn. Ja, joh. <laughs> um, nou. Jaren geleden uh, liep ik door uh, het Hambacher Forst. Dat is een uh, Duits bos, net over de grens bij Nederland. En ik weet nog hoe ik door dat bos liep. En uh, mijn voeten deinsten over het mos. Uh, ik zag eekhoorntjes door de bomen heen springen. Uh, ik tapte op een takje en van het geluid sprok een uh, ree in de verte sprong weg. Uh, de rook naar het bos, het was echt uh, een super mooie plek. En terwijl ik van het geluid van de fluitende vogeltjes aan het genieten was, liep ik door en 50 meter verderop uh, was alles met de grond gelijk gemaakt. Er groeide niks meer boven 20 centimeter. En uh, de geur van het bos, wat ik zo fantastisch vond, was plaatsgemaakt voor uh, de geur van vers gekapt hout. En nog 50 meter verderop was een enorme afgrond voor een gigantisch groot gat van 100 meter groot. Groter dan Amsterdam. Waar apocalyptische machines in stonden van honderden meters lang. Die letterlijk de aarde aan het weggraven waren. Dat uh, is voor de Duitse bruinkolenmijnen. En alles voor die mijnen moest dus zwichten. Het was van dorpen die verdwenen erin. Snelwegen, ik vond niet zo erg... Maar ook, ook uh, eeuwenoude bossen. En nou, ik kon niet anders dan... Ik zakte door mijn knieën en ik moest... Ja, gewoon echt flink huilen. En um, ik denk dat we allemaal wel eens door een bos lopen... en ervan kunnen genieten van uh, de vogels die daar fluiten. In Nederland misschien wat minder wilde dieren... maar uh, de frisse en gezonde lucht in tegenstelling tot... Nou, deze is meer dus in Amsterdam. Um, en in Nederland hebben we misschien niet veel bos, maar wel heel veel andere natuurgebieden. We hebben duinen, we hebben heides, we hebben plassen, we hebben stranden. En ja, als we daardoor lopen, um, kunnen we echt tot rust komen, denk ik. Maar voor hoe lang nog? Want heel veel Nederlandse natuur is uh, zwaar bedreigd. De eikenbossen op de Veluwe die staan op het punt om uh, in te storten. Um, veel habitattypes uh, zijn ernstig bedreigd en ook op een manier dat die niet meer uh, hersteld kunnen worden. Um, dus ja, daar moeten we eigenlijk wel echt, echt iets aan doen. Um, dus ja, wat, wat kan je doen? Um, je hoeft dus op zich niet per se... Uh, een boom in te gaan. <laughs> uh, je kan meerdere dingen doen. Je kan uh, gaan posteren door je stad, vleieren, met mensen praten. Je kan een uh, campagne beginnen. Um, en een van de dingen die we doen is uh, de klimaatmars op 19 juni. En 
Even kijken, wie is dat de klimaatwars dit jaar 19 juni in Rotterdam is? Oké, okay. nou goed. <laughs> dus de klimaatmars begon uh, jaren geleden met uh, enkele honderden mensen die daar naartoe gingen. En toen werden met duizenden mensen die daar naartoe gingen. Nu zitten we op tienduizenden mensen die daar naartoe gingen. En we gaan dus richting de honderdduizenden mensen uh, die daar naartoe gaan. Zodat we daar een uh, krachtig signaal kunnen laten horen. Um, ik denk zelf dat de Nederlandse natuur redden onszelf redden betekent. Dat we een verbinding uh, weer met de natuur kunnen vinden. Um, en... Um, ja, ik denk net dat ik een stuk ben vergeten, maar... <laughs> um, we gaan gewoon door. Ik wil even handen zien van wie naar de klimaatmars gaat op dit moment. Oké, okay. het is bijna iedereen. Um, dus ik zou zeggen... Um, ja, ik wil ik nog heel even jullie handen, de handen zien? Oh ja, dus kijk even om je heen. Als je die mensen dus niet ziet, hè... <laughs> Nee, maar um, hoe we echt op de honderdduizenden mensen gaan komen, is uh, natuurlijk ook mensen betrekken die hier niet zijn. Dus uh, ik wil heel even dat je je mobiel pakt um, en um, bedenkt wie van je vrienden of familie niet naar de klimaatmars zou gaan, die jij nu een appje gaat sturen om, wel, om te komen naar Rotterdam op uh, 19 juni. Dus ik zie nog niet zoveel mensen mijn mobiel pakken, maar misschien moet je even nadenken wie op het randje zit van... Um, ik ging er al naartoe, die komen sowieso, oh, die, die willen wel komen, dus um, ja, neem daar een momentje voor. En dan um, gaan we een super duidelijk krachtig signaal afgeven op 19 juni. Dankjewel. Dankjewel, Maarten. Um, ja, voor mensen die uh, net niet hun hand opstaken. Um, ja. uh, daar liggen flyers. Neem het nog een keer uh, tot je. We hebben ook een klimaatbrochure. Marxistisch, uh, ja, hoe zeg je dat? Commentaar, analyse van uh, de klimaatcrisis. Um, kijk er eens in en word alsjeblieft heel erg boos. Um, ja, en we zijn namelijk ook niet alleen maar bezig, het is supergoed, we moeten allemaal de straat op. Um, maar wat we als internationale socialisten ook heel belangrijk vinden, is uh, je theoretisch verdiepen in uh, de stof. En de, dit weekend hebben we, ik dacht, 2300 euro aan boeken verkocht. Dus dat is echt super gaaf. Ja. Echt heel klaar, vooral voor jullie dus. <laughs> en uh, ja, ik hoop dat jullie er heel erg veel plezier mee hebben. En dat jullie allemaal ons gaan uh, ondersneeuwen met mailtjes en belletjes. Zo van, hé, hey, ik wil meer weten, want ik heb dit gelezen. Give me more. Um, even kijken. Wie was de volgende? Omar? Ja? Oké, okay. dit is Omar. Um, hier is... Ja? Yeah. Omar uh, came all the way from Maastricht here um, to do uh, a meeting just now. He uh, is mainly active with Free Palestine Maastricht. Uh, myself, I know him from a BDS uh, uh, action in Amsterdam um, where he uh, disrupted a, a play in CREA that is part of the University of Amsterdam, which were uh, hosting... Um, a play, uh, if I say it correctly, funded by Zionist uh, organizations. And they really wanted to uh, pressure the university to break uh, ties with Zionist clubs and, uh, and put uh, attention, of course, on uh, what's going on in uh, Palestine. Um, Omar. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Kreia is also, if I understand correctly, the venue where we would have had... Uh, yeah, that's true. So screw them. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, indeed, uh, the same action that uh, she's talking about, you know, having this Israeli play, uh, which we had to disrupt. Two weeks ago, an Israeli military orchestra was uh, playing in Amersfoort at Flint Theatre, also completely funded and protected by uh, the Dutch state and uh, uh, as well as the Israeli embassy here. Um, so that just tells you a bit about how crazy it is at the same time that uh, Shirin Abu Akleh was killed, the Palestinian journalist, at the same time that, uh, you know, the war crimes were ongoing. The place where we live, our governments, our state structures are using our tax money to protect events like these. But it was disrupted, so it's all good. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I was really impressed by uh, Martin's actions in the, in the forest and uh, just in general the way the climate crisis is approached uh, within this movement, um, which is why it's important to look at how in a broader picture the climate crisis is intrinsically linked to uh, imperialism and colonialism. If we only uh, approach the superficiality of it, it will never be truly resolved. So um, I've been uh, with a, a bunch of other people in the Netherlands over the last year uh, growing uh, a movement for Palestine of students, of uh, legal teams, of BDS activists, uh, trade unionists. It, it's a broad movement and it's a movement that has also existed for years but been livened up by the uh, recent atrocities. Um, because Palestinian liberation is at the core, as I've mentioned, I'm also going to try not to repeat too many things from the previous talk, uh, but it's at the core of, of each of these injustices that we try to address, um, that have been addressed also at this Marxism festival. Um, so the core values of anti-Zionism, anti-imperialism, and anti-colonialism, when you look at the story of Palestine as a case study, as an example, of the broader state of the world we live in today, you have a 70-year-old ongoing occupation of a land, of a peoples, funded, aided, and benefited from by our own governments in the West, in the Netherlands, in Britain, in the UK, in, uh, in the US. Um, and it's therefore our responsibility not, not simply to condemn it by heart, but to do something about this. The bare minimum is to make sure that there is no complicity on our side, that our taxes aren't used to fund the Israeli occupation, to buy Israeli weapons, uh, to, to polish the Israeli image to the West. If you look at the NOS, uh, the Dutch state media, and the way it, it reports on every single happening uh, in uh, Palestine, you see how much we have to unravel and unlearn and unteach in order to reach the core of the issue. Um, and it's a, it's a difficult process because uh, it is years and decades of state propaganda, not just within the Palestinian question, uh, but with a lot of other things. Um, it's years of propaganda that need to be unlearned. Um, and once we get to unlearning the propaganda, we get to pressuring the institutions, the universities, the trade unions, the pension funds, the governments to uh, end their complicity, which is the absolute bare minimum. Um, and that's why it's important to also keep in mind the end goal. We want to end the complicity now of the institutions now and the structures now that are complicit. Uh, but these are not the structures that are going to save us. They're not going to save us from the climate crisis. They're not going to save us uh, uh, from colonialism. They're not going to save us from imperialism. This is a means to an end, and this is an instrument in the broad fight against what is a very, very fucked up world order that sees people dehumanized and devalued and, and seen as subhuman if they're not white, blonde, and blue-eyed, um, and if their land happens to have resources that benefit the West. So um, the, the things that can be done, um, there are groups for all kinds of people, if you're a student, if you, uh, if you are in a trade union, if you are just simply interested, if you have people around you who are not aware, who you can talk to and educate, um, educate and organize and join a movement uh, and protest. There's at least in six, seven different uh, Dutch cities, heavily active groups um, that organize you know, protests, seminars, lectures, campaigns calling for boycotts, divestments and sanctions. Um, join one of them, talk to the people there, come up to one of us after this and uh, get in touch. Um, and just remember that uh, from the river to the sea. Will be free. Thank you.
activist is one of my comrades, Danai. Um, she lives now in uh, Den Haag. She's from the Den Haag branch. And um, originally, origin, ugh, originally, she came from Greece. And there she was uh, active in, yeah, kind of the same organization as the IS, but in Greece. And there they set up uh, an anti-fascist um, network organization. And yeah, it would be very interesting to hear um, about what you have to tell us. And now we can compare it to you. Uh, it would be nice for me. <laughs> Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Let's start by explaining what this organization is. Um, the name of, our, of this organization is called KERFA. It means uh, Movement Against Racism and Fascism. Um, this uh, organization was uh, constructed uh, from um, students, uh, anti-racist organizations in general, feminist organizations, LGBTQ organizations, unions like uh, hospitals and teachers, uh, refugee organized uh, uh, groups, and uh, generally activists. Um, it was created uh, in 2008 or 9. I'm sorry, I don't remember exactly the date. Um, at that point, it looked like uh, there was no reason to create this organization because fascists were not uh, strong enough in my country at that point. Uh, but um, our party could see that uh, fascists were getting stronger and stronger. So they decided to create this organization uh, a few years before the fascists uh, entered the parliament <coughs> and uh, they had the um, confidence to go out on the street and actually starting getting uh, aggressive. Um, on, uh, at uh, 2013, there was a, a turning point in the movement. Uh, um, the fascists were very uh, dangerous for um, uh, refugees and also for the left in uh, the country. And uh, the murder of a, a Greek rapper uh, rang the emergency bells uh, for everyone. Um, the, of course, they were attacking the previous year's uh, refugees, um, <coughs> but uh, they were not that... Uh, uh, they were even marching in the streets, uh, hiling their hands in the, the air. They were, they were uh, feeling like they, they would change um, the scenery in Greece uh, for sure. But, uh, KERFA. KERFA is, uh, is majorly responsible for uh, changing the opinion of the people in Greece, uh, kicking them out of parliament, and in five years, we locked the, the fascists into jail. Um, how did we do that? Um, <coughs> we used the court. <laughs> which was a kind of um, a hard discussion with the rest of the left. Um, it, it's controversial. Um, but we use the court uh, for our own um, um, benefit? benefit. Thank you very much. Um, we still don't trust the court. Even if we won the case, we still know what it is. But no one said that we can't use a court to prove that a an organization that uh, says to the public that they are a political party, uh, yeah, that they are not in, in reality. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. We all know, after the Second World War, what fascists means. Uh, what fascist groups are doing uh, in general, and what they did also in Greece, was that they are trying to uh, rebrand themselves, trying to um, look just as uh, angry civilians, um, and they were behind in movements like 
um, the <coughs> angry parent movement um, who were just parents locking schools, blocking e uh, refugee children of in entering schools and having disturbing um, theories of, yeah. And they were getting bigger and bigger, unfortunately. Um, the left. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not used to talking public. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, let's start with our slogans. <laughs> uh, the, the, the slogans were um, to open the schools uh, for all the children, uh, open the borders, no more dead people in the Greek borders. This was a very um, hard discussion to have, and uh, unfortunately, the Greek government hasn't still opened the borders. Um, I, there are uh, there are numbers estimating the dead people in Greek borders. Uh, they are often uh, 5,000 people, uh, which is very scary. Um, we were um, saying that uh, Golden Dawn is not a political organization, but a criminal organ a, a, a political party, but a criminal organization. And uh, yeah, uh, Kerfa as an organization was inter uh, intersectional. Uh, they also worked with uh, many, uh, they, they were uh, in LGBTQ uh, parade, um, demonstrations, they were everywhere. Um, how I would like to do, uh, close this. Um, what we can learn about this? As I see it now, it looks like when the left is united, we actually have the power to change things, even when they don't look like they are going to be the way we want. And uh, this whole uh, story was a big win for the Greek uh, movement and a, a huge um, lesson for the rest of uh, the left, I think. And I think that's why they called me to say that. Uh, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>
I also think that for us it's important to emphasize that this festival is not a one-directional di experience where like we as international socialists tell our contacts or comrades like what's up, but this is like a two-way street, right? So all of you have come here, who participated, you shared your knowledge, your experience, and your perspectives with us, and that also deserves some applause, so thanks. <laughs> I think we had so many amazing meetings this 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 week by or this weekend by a lot of cool comrades. Um, I've heard so much positive feedback about meetings, um, for example, about Ukraine, about the struggle against the far right, about climate change. But we also got new perspectives, for example, on the need to talk about capitalism and neurodivergency more, um, and give comrades and contacts uh, opportunities to talk and share their experiences. And I think that's also why Marxism Festival is really important, that we can share amongst each other and organize, like we can share today and organize tomorrow, right? So that's, that was really successful for us, I think. I think the period that we're experiencing at the moment uh, is one full of contradictions. Uh, we see that the working class uh, still continue to be um, uh, like suffering under the consequences of austerity, of an ever forward pushing long uh, crisis of the economic system, um, that people struggle to find affordable housing or housing at all, to be honest, that racism and the far right are ever more present and being normalized in ever new and disgusting ways, um, and that there's a real possibility of a devastating war between imperialist blocs that could you know, wipe out humanity, but at the same time that there's also still um, immense threat uh, to the environmental system into our planet and the destruction of it. Um, so unfortunately, we also have to struggle against yet another Rutte cabinet that kind of stumbles from scandal to scandal, um, but still positions itself as you know, there being no alternative to it. Um, I think the last period um, that we've lived through or that we're still living through that of like the coronavirus um, made organizing both the festival in the last couple of years, but also organizing in general like a real struggle. Um, and it was very difficult, I think, to maintain movements from below because we had to find very new ways of, of being active and of organizing and of networking. Many mov movements took serious blows during this um, period, and many parties and organizations have struggled to keep their head over water. But I think that's why it's ever more important to now come together at moments like Marxism Festival with many comrades from many different movements um, uh, and share experiences, be it the housing struggle, the climate struggle, the struggle for the liberation of Palestine, but also having uh, comrades of other political organizations and groups active here, um, present here, like for example, of Bahrain, of uh, the Democratic Socialists, of Rot and of others. Um, and I think it's, yeah, it's really important that we have so many diverse speakers um, on so many different topics. Um, also, for example, on the, the climate, climate march on the 19th in Rotterdam, and it's crucial that as revolutionaries, we join these movements openly and visibly to share our revolutionary perspectives of saving the planet that go beyond just kind of, you know, consumer boycotts or like buying an electronic car um, uh, or hoping for the next billionaire to kind of come up with some, some great solution to save us. Um, you know, we have to realize that, the, that these institutions in the states are not there to represent us, um, but that they're there to pacify us and we have to struggle against them uh, because every advance that we make in the, in the struggle for, for the climate is a struggle that um, the working class has to fight for and has to kind of, you know, force into, into, into place. Um, I think the reality today at large is that a, lo a lot of comrades feel often unmotivated and frustrated if we look at all of these kind of things because it feels like we have a lot to lose if we're not successful um, in this period of struggle um, ahead of us lies an age of wars, of climate destruction um, that will hit a lot of us, but in particular the people in the global south, an age of pandemics, and a kind of like rolling back of the gains that the working class has fought for for decades. But I think, I'm not saying this to like, you know, point out all of the bad, but there's also things that motivate us in this. Um, and I think because we're Marxists, we know that even when we're faced with this kind of barbarism of bourgeois society, socialism will always be an alternative that's worth fighting for. We don't just have a lot to lose, we have, a lot, we have ever more to win. As working class revolutionaries, we can participate in building a world that we've never seen before, that's characterized by solidarity, by shared and democratic management of our workplaces, our universities, and our everyday lives. A world that does no hunger or war. But we cannot fight for this world alone. <laughs> Our conceptualization of change is one of a struggle for revolutionary socialism from below, a struggle that is based in working class activity and the self-emancipation of the working class. 
That struggle doesn't happen in the heads of individuals. It doesn't happen in our organization alone. It doesn't happen in just the union struggle or just the climate struggle, but it comes from militant mass action of our entire class collectively. Um, as an individual, you can only do so much, but if you're organized, you can like pull in one direction, you can win things together. I think this is why it's so important that we come together collectively and discuss our struggle against the system at large, and we discuss kind of what movements we need to support and how to support them, but that we also share our experiences amongst each other as marginalized people and as working class people at large to draw collective lessons, because I think when we bring our experiences together and discuss them collectively, that's when we can find out how to build consciousness in our class and how to build movements that can win, that can struggle and that can win. Um, of course, after discussing, we need to get organized and we need to like, coordinate these lessons um, and we need to put them into action in the streets. And that's why I think if you're not a member yet, <laughs> You should, uh, but if you want to join the struggle and if you want to educate yourself and your comrades on Marxism, you should consider joining an organization because we need your numbers and we need your experiences and your perspectives. In exchange, we can offer an organization that is rooted in a tradition of a full century of struggle with, with countless lessons that can show you how to root your perspectives and experiences firmly in Marxism and revolutionary theory and make a real historical possibility, make the real historical possibility of working class socialism from below finally a reality. We have a world to win. Thanks. Ik laat jullie gewoon doorgaan hoor, dat uh, klinkt best wel goed. Ja, <laughs> uh, yeah. everyone, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and your enthusiasm and your drive for uh, yeah, being on the street and being an activist and fighting for a better world. Ja, um, yeah, dan zijn we wel echt een beetje nu aan het einde gekomen, denk ik. Ik heb nog een paar dingen die ik wil zeggen. Um, nou, de meeste van jullie weten denk ik wel dat uh, dit niet de locatie was waar we in eerste instantie zouden zitten. Um, we zouden eerst naar Crea gaan, maar uh, ja, daar waren nogal wat fouten gemaakt. En um, gelukkig mochten we hier uh, last minute nog uh, naartoe en naar, ook naar de Stay OK. Het is wel zo dat we daarvoor, onder andere daarvoor enorm extra kosten hebben moeten maken. Um, en sowieso, actie voeren en onszelf organiseren, ook als organisatie, kost geld. Uh, we hebben een donatiemogelijkheid uh, buiten bij de tafel. Uh, mochten jullie nog iets kunnen missen, dan is alles uh, welkom. Uh, even kijken, ja, uh, neem vooral materiaal mee, actiemateriaal, bijvoorbeeld van de Klimaatmars. Uh, van de 19e juni, ik ga het nog tien keer zeggen denk ik, maar <laughs> het ligt hier, maar ook uh, buiten. Um, ook rondom andere acties hebben we nog uh, wat materiaal liggen. Um, de Amsterdamse afdeling van de Internationale Socialisten heeft uh, een leesgroep in, als ik het goed zeg, juni, toch? 9 juni. 9 juni is de eerste sessie. We gaan het uh, boekje Revolutie in de 21e eeuw uh, bespreken. En lezen eerst. Um, <laughs> uh, ja, als je daarin geïnteresseerd bent, liggen ook flyertjes. Maar je kan ook mij aanspreken of uh, Hans of Lorraine. Of nou ja, eigenlijk iedereen wel, denk ik, van uh, de internationale socialisten. Die kunnen je wel uh, verder helpen. Uh, in het najaar hebben we als Amsterdamse afdeling... Ja, sorry, ik ga even reclame maken. Maar uh, <laughs> hebben we ook nog een leesgroep uh, over het communistisch manifest. Um, dus dat zou op zich een hele leuke serie zo zijn um, in de reeks. Ja, <laughs> uh, yeah, mocht je nou echt uh, geïnteresseerd zijn geraakt en je hebt net kennis met ons gemaakt of je kent ons misschien al wat langer en je denkt ja ik zit toch wel te denken over lidmaatschap of uh, ik wil nu gewoon lid worden, dat kan ook. Um, er zit een team straks met onder andere Max daar, oh ze staan al heel enthousiast klaar. <laughs> Um, er moet ook iemand van Amsterdam bij mensen. Ja. Ja. Oh, Elmar, sorry. Die staat er al. Laat maar. Ik ben echt niet meer, uh, niet meer scherp. 
Dus ik ga er ook maar mee stoppen, denk ik. Um, dank jullie wel dat jullie er allemaal waren. En ja, bel ons alsjeblieft, mail ons plat. En dan uh, zien we elkaar heel snel weer. En in ieder geval bij de Klimaatmars op 19 juni. Woehoe! 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 Wo